So some people think that, uh, hey, you know, I'm going to maybe give feng shui a try. Maybe feng shui can help me. Um, to use or not to use feng shui, just to put it in Shakespearean terms. Well, <laughs> uh, I hate to break it to you guys, but feng shui doesn't actually turn on or off when you decide to use it or not use it. Whether you live in an apartment or in a house, there is energy there whether you know about it or not. Um, whether you care about the weather, whether you care about, you know, astronomy and all that, whether you care about objective reality, just to put it in more general terms, or not, objective reality doesn't care about what you care, right? Objective reality is. And similarly, right, when you, when you live in an apartment or a house, there is a dynamic and uh, very clearly present energy uh, in each of the cardinal sectors of your house or your apartment, right? So what I want, what I want to say is that you are influenced by that energy anyway. You just don't know it. You just see the direct or indirect results of that in your daily lives, right? So that energy exists whether you know it, whether you use it, or whether you don't know about it. Whether it's positive or negative, you don't know. You just look at your life. And the bad news is that um, you're probably having a lot of problems because of how you use your uh, house. The good news is, no matter how bad your house or apartment is, once you know, once you learn what the best areas are, and for what purpose you can actually transform your life incredibly, right? Now, imagine that we have eight cardinal sectors, right? So, for example, north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, right? And in, in each of these, every house, every apartment has a certain kind of energy. You have eight energies, eight different mixes of energy, right? And of course, some will be better than others. Some will be suitable for some uses. Others will be more suitable for others. What, for example, if you have a very uh, active kind of energy in your bedroom, right? Maybe that energy is not necessarily negative. Maybe it's very good for making money. But if you sleep in it, you're going to have some restless sleep. Ask yourself, do you have insomnia? Maybe that's the problem. Uh, what if you're constantly thinking about money just before going to sleep? What if you're constantly thinking about what you're going to do next day at your job? This could be one of those symptoms that tells you, hey, you're living in the wrong, you're, you're sleeping in the wrong sector. Maybe that sector would be very, very good for you for work, but not so good for uh, sleeping. How about uh, relationships, right? Maybe you uh once you go into the bedroom uh you already kind of feel a little bit of an agitation a restlessness and you feel like you know i'm gonna really pick on something that my partner does and we're gonna have a fight and there's gonna be some tension right and this kind of always starts sometime in the bedroom right maybe that bedroom maybe that particular place where you have your headboard right where you have the the bed uh, is very good for self-esteem but not necessarily good for relationships because uh, if you use it to sleep in there and spend most of your time it will create tension in that relationship but maybe that could be an incredible area for uh, starting projects, right? Because that kind of tense energy is very good for initiating change. So guys, my, my message is very, very simple. Energy exists whether you know it or not. And good or bad is not necessarily uh, an objective distinction. It's actually a relative distinction depending on good for what or bad for what. The same energy can be very good for one thing and very bad for another thing. So how can you find out? Well, this is where the art of and science of feng shui comes in. It enables us to calculate 
um, depending on the orientation of the building and you know a lot of the variables that we take into account what the energy structure and layout of any particular apartment or building or house are and then how we can actually use it and sometimes how we can even actually modify it so that it is much more suitable to our uses of course the kind of a the 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 pinnacle of feng shui is to actually have something uh, built from scratch um, based on your needs and on your energetic structure by the way uh, feng shui will take into account the differences between different people the same house might be more beneficial to someone but not so good for someone else um, and it might be bringing different effects for different people right so the idea is that you might want to acknowledge this energy because it influences you anyway. You might as well choose how you use it and use it in your interest, in your positive outcomes that you want to achieve. So I hope that this has been useful. And if you're interested to find out more, uh, there's this um, Facebook group that I have, which is called Chief Low Rebels. You'll find details of it in the description. And that's just to reunite everyone who is interested in, in finding all out more about energy from the perspective of ancient Chinese wisdom, arts like, for example, feng shui and Chinese astrology, meaning bazi, and, for example, acupuncture, and some exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. So... If you uh, resonate with that, I'll see you in the group. And until then, leave some comments here about what you liked, what you didn't like, maybe some topics that you might want to have addressed in, in future videos. And of course, like and subscribe because that really helps with the algorithm. I'll see you in the next video.